Well, Griff, for more on the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion, we are joined by Republican Senator from Mississippi and member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee, Roger Wicker. Senator, great to have you here this morning. Thanks so much. Good to be with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, well, you're welcome. I want to get your thoughts on the protests planned at the homes of the six conservative Supreme Court justices after their addresses were released online and how the White House has yet to condemn any of this. What should the White House be saying, if anything? I really think this is going to backfire on the pro-abortion uh, people around the country. The person within the Supreme Court's uh, close circle who leaked this improperly um, will will be found uh, out eventually, and this person will be barred, um, perhaps be a, a celebrity in the left wing circles, but uh, will will be disbarred from practicing law. And I think it's really really uh, breached a centuries long precedent of, of the court. Um, I, you know, people like senators and representatives are uh, are used to this sort of thing. Uh, they can protest in front of my office and and um, this very office I'm talking to you from, we've had protests and that's part of it. Supreme Court justices are supposed to call balls and strikes, as the Chief Justice said when he was confirmed. They're supposed to interpret the Constitution as it was written and they're really not subject to public opinion and not supposed to be. So I think this is improper. Uh, I, I think both Democrats and Republicans should have denounced the leak. So far, it's only come from our side. And I think uh, Democrats and Republicans ought to say, uh, get off the church grounds, let people have Mother's Day in their own uh, re religious way tomorrow, and, uh, and let the Supreme Court interpret the law as it was written by the founding fathers in the Constitution. Yeah, we're definitely in uncharted waters here. And, you know, there has been a lot of reaction to this, of course, from the Democratic side of the aisle, vowing to do something about this potential decision. <laughs> Let's take a listen to Senator Chuck Schumer. The blame for this decision falls squarely on Senate Republicans who spent years pushing extremist judges and justices while claiming this day would never come. But come it has. So he's blaming you, Senator, for a decision that the Supreme Court has every right to make. It was always a possibility. What's your reaction to that? Well, he's using the term blame, and, uh, and that's his right to do. Uh, I think a lot of voters around the country would say uh, that the, the credit, if this in fact does tend to be, does end up being the final decision of the Supreme Court, uh, the, the credit will be to those of us who believe that this decision should be returned to the people of the United States and their elected representatives. Uh, I, I just defy anyone to look in the Constitution as it was written or as it has been amended over time and find a constitutional right to abortion. Roe versus Wade was wrongly decided and, uh, and, and I think politically decided, if this turns out to be the final decision and the Chief Justice has cautioned us not to jump to that conclusion, then, then I think most Americans will be comfortable with, with the people and their elected representatives making this decision as they had done for uh, some uh, century and a half before the decision came down yes. in Roe versus Wade. We will see uh, what happens there for sure. Let, let's turn quickly to the economy and the ongoing inflation problem and the stock market roller coaster of the last week. The jobs report came out yesterday, slightly better than expected. You see there on the screen, 428,000 jobs created. But inflation is rising at a faster rate than wages. Take a look at this. Inflation, 8.5% rise. Wages, only 5.5%. Uh, last week, you tweeted this. Uh, the economic pain Americans are experiencing is no laughing matter. We need our commander in chief to cut the jokes and do the job he is supposed to do. So quickly, what should the president do to ease all this economic pain? Well, the first thing you should do is open up the Keystone XL pipeline and quit declaring war on something that's very plentiful in North America, uh, North American oil and uh, natural gas. Um, it, it is the Biden administration's war on producing oil and gas that has caused the huge uh, spike at, at the pump. And, and then this, this inflation, prices are up 8.5% across the board. 
And uh, and as as your chart just showed, wages up 5.5 percent. That means uh, middle class American workers um, that got a um, nominal pay raise actually uh, are three percent behind from uh, from where they were before they got the pay raise. So uh, it, inflation is terrible. I think it's going to be the major issue this year. And and Larry Summers, the the Treasury Secretary under the Obama administration, warned. President Obama and the Democrats in the House and Senate not to do this. When Biden first took office, he said that this will cause an inflation. It has done that. And it, it seems now, unless we're very, very lucky, we're going to have a recession because of this. Uh, we should have created many more jobs than that report yesterday. All right. Uh, Senator Roger Wicker, thank you so much for your thoughts there. Really appreciate it, sir. And we'll see you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.